This monster integral looks absolutely terrifying. Most students would take an hour grinding through it. But here's the secret. There's a trick that makes this almost trivial. Once you see the hidden structure, the whole thing collapses in seconds. Let me show you how. The first move is to use some basic properties of integrals to break this down into more manageable pieces. The key is to distribute that square root term across the sum inside the parentheses. Notice this square root term here. We'll multiply it through to each piece inside those parentheses. And now we've got a sum of two separate terms under the integral. Since we have a sum here, we can split this into two separate integrals. That's just the linearity of integration at work. Much better. Now we can tackle each integral separately and see what patterns emerge. The first integral has something special going on with its symmetry. Take a look at those limits of integration. They go from negative 2 to positive 2, perfectly symmetric around 0. Whenever you see that, it's worth checking whether the integrand is odd or even. Here's a fact worth remembering. When you integrate an odd function over a symmetric interval, the result is always 0. The positive area on one side exactly cancels the negative area on the other. Let's call this function f of x. To check if it's odd, we need to see what happens when we plug in negative x. So we replace every x with negative x and see what happens. Let's think about each piece. When you cube a negative number, you get a negative. Cosine is an even function, so cosine of negative something equals cosine of that something. And squaring a negative gives you a positive. Putting all that together, we get this cleaner form. And look at that. We can factor out this negative sign from the whole thing. What's left inside is exactly our original function, f of x. So, f of negative x equals negative f of x. That's the definition of an odd function. Which means this entire integral is just zero. All that complexity. And it vanishes. Now let's look at the second integral. There's a familiar geometric shape hiding in here. First, let's pull that constant one-half out in front. That makes things a bit tidier. Now, this integral represents the area under a curve. Specifically, y equals the square root of 4 minus x squared, from negative 2 to 2. What shape is this? Well, y is a square root, so it's non-negative. Let's square both sides to see what we're really dealing with. Squaring gets rid of that square root. Rearranging terms gives us something you've definitely seen before. The equation of a circle centered at the origin with radius 2. And since y is non-negative, we're just looking at the upper semicircle. Let's draw this out. What we're after is the area of the upper semicircle. Here's what the function looks like from negative 2 to 2. The integral gives us the area of this shaded region, a semicircle with radius 2. The area of a semicircle is 1 half pi r squared. Our radius r is 2, plugging in 2 for r. 2 squared is 4, and 1 half times 4 gives us 2 pi. So this integral evaluates to 2 pi. Time to put the pieces together. Remember, we split the original integral into two parts. The first one turned out to be zero, and the second one gave us two pi. Plugging those in makes this pretty straightforward. One half times two pi simplifies to just pi. Zero plus pi. And we land on pi. What started as this menacing integral turned into something quite elegant once we recognized the symmetry and the geometry hiding inside. It's a nice reminder that sometimes the best approach isn't to push through with brute force, but to step back and look for structure. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, consider giving it a like and subscribing for more. See you in the next one.